Tread East, Treddy for East Town. Best school in PA, yeah baby, right here in our own backyard. Located in Wayne, Pennsylvania, that's the headquarters, that's the, um, let's say the administration building is there, okay? Now look, Tread East, Treddy for East Town, ranked up there right along with Radnor. So they're kind of in the fight for the, for the best ranking, but it's literally the best in the, in the state, literally the top 10 in the country. People flock here just to go to these schools. They will buy a house in this area just to send their kids to the school. Now we did another video and, and it may be out, it may not be out yet, but it's coming out where we're getting into the fall season here. So we're thinking of school, we love school, we're hitting up school, let's talk about school. Who doesn't love school, right? <laughs> so today we're focusing just on Tread East. So Tread East is in Chester County, services Treddyfrin and East Town uh, Townships. Now I don't know why they call it Tread East, okay? But what makes it number one? Well, we went really in depth on this in, in, a, in another video. And what it boils down to is the test scores. That's it, video over, see you later, see you on the next one now. But that's the major portion of what makes a school a good school. And this is what makes Tread East and Radnor, we'll get you get your own video, Radnor. That's what makes Treddy for an East Town the best school in the state, in the, in the country, highly, highly, highly nationalized, highly, highly, highly ranked nationally because of the test scores. So it's reading proficiency and math proficiency. These are these uh, Pennsylvania state regulated tests. How many students do a certain percentage and how well do they do? Boom, you become the first best school. If I had to say it in a nutshell, that's it. But it's not just that, it's also attendance record. It's also how many students, it's 99% of Tread East graduates go on, to, uh, go on to higher education. It's also the amount of students in the high school level that are in AP courses, advanced placement, um, how do you say, genius courses or gifted. I don't know if they can still say that now. <laughs> If someone is gifted, I'm sure someone somewhere will get upset if you call them gifted. Look, life is a gift and so is Tread East. All right, so Tread East Boundaries is about 38 square miles. You got eight schools and about 7,000 students. All right, let's see if I can name all eight schools. Okay, hold on. School number one. So let's go high school, Conestoga High School. Stoga. Conestoga High School is got to be the most popular high school in our area. Generally speaking, with the, even within a 50 mile radius, I would be, I'd be willing to say Conestoga High. Now you got Tread East, Treddy for an East Town Middle School. You got Valley Forge Middle School. Now that might be pretty close to Valley Forge Park. Now the other five are the elementary schools, which service and, and flow into the uh, secondary and, and high school or middle school and high school. So we got Valley Forge Elementary. Not to be mistaken of Valley Forge Middle, but we got Valley Forge Elementary. We got New Eagle Elementary, Beaumont Elementary, Devon, and Hillside. Now, Devon, we did a video on Devon, is a section of the of, of that of Chester County. Definitely did a video on that. We did a video on Wayne. So we've got a, a decent expansive uh, portion of, of the main line of Wayne, of generally speaking, of Treddy Friend and East Town Townships. So Again, well, you're telling me some good information, but I, hey, my school has some highly ranks too. Well, Tread East has 48 national AP scholars that graduated from the high school. It also has, I mentioned, I think I said this before, I'm not sure, but it's important. 99% of graduates go on to um, higher education. All right, so we mentioned around 7,000 students. We mentioned eight buildings. We did break that down a little bit for you. You got five elementary schools, you got two middle schools, and you got Stoga High, Conestoga High School. So between all the schools, you've got about 23, 2,400 people in each school, which is a nice um, ratio, if you will. The average ratio is about 22 to one, could be as high as 28, could be as low as 18, but the average is right around 22 to one. That's 22 students for one teacher. Now they do hold their teachers to a very high standard. Most schools do, in fact, all schools do. So you can't just, they're not gonna just pick 
pick you up on the street and grab the first real estate expert that comes along and says, hey, you want to teach here? <laughs> uh, I don't know it by experience, but I think that probably wouldn't happen. You have over more than 500 people on staff and more than 85% of them have a higher education. Now, obviously, they're all college educated, but they have a master's degree or higher. So Pennsylvania schools, most of them, I guess all of them are. I mean, there are state regulated, but the hierarchy stands as the superintendent. The superintendent is the big, big boss who probably answers to the school board, right? Uh, now, the school board, I'll talk about that in a second, but you got the superintendent, then you have all of the directors and principals, all the leaders of the school and the, lead, and the directors of the different departments, IT and science, and, and depending on what it is. Uh, from there, you have assistant principals and assistant directors, and, and, and you have some managers and supervisors, and as you come down, uh, that's kind of the hierarchy as it goes. Now, every school will have a, a lead teacher, which God forbid something happens to the principal or the assistant principal, they can take over. You also have a supervising role. So you have a couple of um, trained, specially trained individuals that can help run the school in case of some absence or in case of something that you know, we're, not, we're not ready for. Uh, we're not ready for <clears> or <throat> not expecting, excuse me. Then we've got our teachers, right? And we've got the most favorite position in a school of mine. We've got the lunch staff, okay? Now look, I was kind of half kidding, but it's super important because uh, the, the budget's like $158 million or something, and, but the schools are run impeccably. Now, that also helps to make a school have a good experience. Each kid has a good experience, each staff member, because everybody has a say. So it's not just who teaches and who runs the school. It's who's helped running the school. You've got the maintenance, you've got custodial, you've got the lunch ladies and the lunch guys. The lunch men and women, you've got the school bus system. So there's, um, again, there's a lot of moving parts that go into keeping and making a school be number one. So a lot of people ask me, well, if it's so popular, uh, what, what happens? Uh, aren't you going to be overcrowded? Well, the school is ready for that. Over the last 20 years, they probably had a 35% increase. I mean, by a third, which is, which is massive. Because of this influx, you know, if you're popular, everybody wants to hang out with you. I mean, you know what I mean, right? But uh, so they're ready for this. They have not missed a beat as far as school sizing, as far as class sizing, as far as future thinking, looking ahead and seeing and being able to expand the buildings and their systems all keeping up with technology and all keeping up with their with 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 what we're all here for, right? Is to learn. So very, very critical is forward thinking, you know, thinking ahead. Our school is very popular. Well, maybe we would expand. Oh, we'll deal with it when it comes. No, they're, they're right ahead of the game. So the, the district is not just adding modulars for extra classroom space. There's, there's more to it than that. You've got, you're going to need extra science space. You're going to need an extra kitchen. You're going to need more space for the nurses, more space for support staff. You're going to need a bigger heaters. You're going to need larger, larger rooms for, for, for students, for, for hanging out, for cafeteria, the gymnasium, the sports program. So it's, there's a lot involved and they're, um, they, the, the developers, the, the school system is speculating that they're going to have an additional 20% increase over the next five years, which is, which is going to add you know, hundreds of students so they're already currently and continually expanding. All right, so the real bosses of the schools is the school board. Now, that's a four-year term, and a lot of the school board members have had multiple terms. Now, that's usually a good sign, not like some other voted on offices. <laughs> I'll leave it as that. Not getting too involved in my opinion on who should be voted in and shouldn't be voted in and how long terms should be. Uh, but the school board is is really, really well run and well funded. So a great indication of a, of a great school board is the budget. Do they stay within budget and how much are they utilizing the budget to benefit not only the students, but the facilities, but also the, the township, the area, the foundation for learning in Treddyford Town. This is um, 
it gives resource, uh, money, of course, but also education and, and programs. And it meets the student's needs, not just in a financial way. I mean, maybe, you know, people, everybody falls on tough times, right? Maybe you can't afford school lunch. Maybe you can't afford some of the extracurricular activities, but also provides emotional support. It provides extra programs that aren't already funded by the state, that aren't already funded by the community. So it's not putting a the onus, it's not putting a strain on the budget. This is an additional foundation, which is it has some, some excellent reviews and it has really has an excellent impact. You also have this other group of area residents that are caring and helping called ARCH. Uh, this is probably 40 years old, this group. So the, the, the community impact that the district has is, is, is literally arm in arm. It, it's, it, 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 it shows and it proves why. We're talking today about, well, why is it number one? It's not just the test scores. It's the community involvement. It's the amount of kids. It's the fun that they have. So um, that's the experience overall. Well, I hope you found this helpful. If you did find it helpful, I'd like to know. If you didn't, I'd also like to know that. I do like constructive criticism. Just be kind. <laughs> I'm thinking of moving to the Philadelphia area. Definitely want to check out our home buying guide and our home selling guide here. Grab yourself a copy. They are free, put together by yours truly, and they are shown down in the notes below. Check out this video here, Living in Philadelphia, What Are the Neighborhoods? Once again, thank you so much for checking out our channel, Living in Philadelphia, and watching this video. I look to see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.